that on the 8th, he had messaged a couple of people, not family, but a couple of people that he was friends with, um, that he thought he might be in some trouble and might need some help. Um, by the time those people were really able to get back with him and got that message, um, he stopped messaging and nobody's been able to reach him since. That is the mother of missing person, David Zachary Koenig. And there's something very interesting about this story. Uh, David is a amateur MMA fighter, and he reached out to a bunch of friends saying he thought he might be in trouble, and no one has heard from him again since. Obviously, we have a big cause for concern. He's been missing for several months at this point, and it's time that we all get together and try to help this family. It's time to turn on the searchlight for David Koenig. I'm just going to keep on going, man, keep on pushing, you know, uh, keep up the intensity, man. And, uh, you know, when, whenever a pro card comes out that wants to take me on, you know, I'm just waiting for it, man. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Brain Scratch Searchlight. I'm John Lorden. Um, we've got another case to look into today. Before we get into that case, I just want to give you a quick update on Devonte Morgan's case, the case we covered last week. I did get in contact with his family. I did get the information I needed from the NamUs profile. I reached out to NamUs. I asked to make sure there wasn't a profile already being created. They told me there wasn't. Go ahead. Uh, I created the profile, and then it seems that during the review process, the Mount Shasta Police Department has decided that they're going to make their own profile for Devante. So as of when I'm filming this, I still haven't seen a profile active quite yet, but I'm sure in the next few days there will be an active profile for Devante. And I just want to say to all his friends and family that reached out, um, thank you for the kind words, and I really hope that raising this exposure will help you find the answers that you're all looking for. Let's continue on to today's case, starting at NamUs. Here we have a profile for David Zachary Koenig, a white male Caucasian. Date of last contact is February 8th, 2020. He's missing from Branson, Missouri at the age of 25. Uh, he stands six foot six inches tall, and we're going to see a couple photos where it's really clear. This is a really big and strong guy. Um, the weight they have listed here is 245 pounds. I've seen some other reports that say around 240. Um, but for details, kind of the same story that we started with. David stayed at the Peachtree Inn for two days and was last observed at the Peachtree Inn on February 8th, 2020 in Branson, Missouri. David has not been seen since his disappearance. He was reported missing on March 6th, 2020 by family members. And I know a lot of you are wondering, why did it take so long to report him missing? We're going to get some details on that as we go through the articles here today. Hair color is brown, eye color is brown. For distinctive physical features, you can see some of them in this photo already, he has a lot of tattoo. He's got a lot of ink on his body. But on top of that, he has a middle finger missing. Uh, part of it is missing on his left hand. So um, I've seen comments where it says it's, it's fairly obvious if you look at his left hand, you'll see there's a section of his middle finger that's missing. For tattoos, left and right arms, chest, stomach, on his chest in particular is a skull with wings. Um, they're also saying for clothing and accessories, two silver necklaces, but I'm not really seeing a solid description about the necklaces. Um, but we don't have a clothing description, unfortunately. No transportation listed for him. Um, let's learn a little bit more about where this is taking place. Branson, Missouri. Branson is a city in Taney and Stone counties in the U.S. state of Missouri. Branson is in the Ozark Mountains. The population was over 10,000 at the 2010 census. Here's a photo of him, and you can see we're talking a big, strong guy, but you can also get a good sense here of how much ink he has on him. Um, and it's kind of hard to see, but you can see a little bit of the wings and the skull here. It's very close up to his uh, kind of clavicle area. Continuing over, interesting source, first time we've had this on Searchlight, MyMMANews.com. They just put out a profile about this case a few days ago. David Koenig, amateur MMA fighter, missing since February 8th. 2020. And of course, with a case like this, you're wondering about 
um, the possibility that maybe he was abducted in some way. But then you're kind of counterbalancing that with, hey, this guy is, you know, he's fighting in mixed martial arts, which means he's trained in martial arts, should be able to defend himself. On top of that, you're talking six foot six, a lot of muscle on this guy, intimidating look. Um, if this is a foul play situation, what the heck could have happened here? Uh, Koenig, his amateur MMA record is three and one. Uh, and from what I understand, actually, they get to it down here. Uh, he was riding a three-fight win streak, all by finish in the first round in under one minute. So his one loss, it seems like, was his first fight out, and then ever since then, he's been rolling uh, undefeated. His last MMA fight was in March of 2017. Uh, and... We did find the Facebook profile for him. There's not a bunch of information there. I really can't even tell you um, like his favorite music or anything like that from that, at least from the Facebook info, but a photo of him here in the middle of one of his fights. Uh, let's go ahead and continue with some news articles and try to draw out some more details over at ky3.com. Really interesting point here, and it comes out really early, March 19th, 2020. Investigators say the circumstances of his disappearance are suspicious and concerning. And of course, I think that really has to do with the fact that he reached out to friends. Um, I believe there might have been some text messages or Facebook Messenger messages that were part of that. So that's the type of communication that police can review for themselves. And in reviewing that, it seems like they're coming to the conclusion something is wrong in this case. Um, definitely suspicious and concerning. Let's continue over at OzarksFirst.com. Thankfully, his mother has been working really hard on both the formal media and social media fronts to try to share a bunch of information. Um, and we're, we're going to review a lot of her information as we go through this. A mother in Branson is desperate to find her son, who's been missing for nearly two months. She and the community have put out a $5,000 reward. And I just want to thank everyone that is helping her and their family by doing this. Um, it's really special when communities are able to rally together and try to help families in need like this. Tracy Koenig says no one has heard anything about her son since early February. Quote, he's friends with the owner of the Peachtree Inn. Uh, gave him a place to stay for a couple of nights, and on the 8th, he had messaged a couple of people. He thought he might be in some trouble, might need some help. No one has been able to reach him since. Now, unfortunately, we don't get a lot of detail about what type of trouble that he thinks he might be in. Um, I did bump into some really minor uh, criminal things in his past, but like way in his past when he was quite a bit younger. Um, it looks like in one case there was some type of light narcotics charge. In another case, uh, a girl that he was with decided they were going to try to steal a safe from the girl's family's home and then make it look like it was a robbery. Um, but I'm not getting a strong sense that this is a guy that was kind of around too much of a criminal element. Unfortunately, we don't have good enough detail to really go into that too far. But very interesting that he's reaching out to friends saying, hey, I think I might be in some trouble. And then people are trying to get back to him. He's not being responsive and no one knows what happens to him from that point forward. Thank God for social media, said his mother. It's been amazing. They are reaching out and turning every stone trying to help. Branson PD says the case is still open, but there are no updates. Now, that's another thing about this case you'll see as we're going through today's coverage. Not a lot of information about what types of search efforts are going on. And if we take a look at the Peachtree Inn, if we kick on the satellite view, at first I thought, well, this looks like, uh, you know, for search efforts, we might not have many options because there's a lot of businesses around here, a lot of neighborhoods, a lot of buildings. But kind of right behind the peach tree in, we get to this big open area. Um, and it's not giant. I would imagine that um, some search efforts could be done here. Uh, we also see there is some type of river or water source that goes running through here. That's approximately about a mile away, at least at its closest point to the peach tree in. Um, I don't know what type of search efforts have really gone on. I've seen some comments on a Facebook page about this case that's talking about dogs that have been used in some search efforts, but that's about all the detail that I have. Law enforcement really isn't being very open about the search efforts here. If we jump down to street level here, uh, we can see the peach tree in just kind of a modest hotel. Looks like it's in a pretty nice area. Uh, I've read some reviews about the hotel just to get 
a sense, you know, I was looking for, are there regular, you know, people complaining about drug deals happening in the parking lot or something like that? Nothing like that's going on here. Uh, there's some people that really love this hotel and say, you know, it's, it's an affordable place. I'll definitely use it again. Some other people are saying, eh, it's not the cleanest rooms. I probably won't be back or, you know, the fridge is too old and some other things like that. Now I want to drop down to street level just to kind of get a sense of the brush that we're looking at. It's kind of hard to tell from satellite view. Um, and even when it comes to the brush out here, it doesn't seem like it's too crazy. So uh, it looks a little thicker off on this side towards the water, I believe. Um, but this side actually looks kind of tame. I'm thinking you could probably do some relatively easy and safe searches there with community members. But of course, uh, we really don't figure out that he's missing until March 2020, and we all know what happens in March 2020 in terms of the country and very new concerns that we've been dealing with ever since. Um, so yeah, I, I just I wish I had better information for you guys on the search efforts, but it's just not being put out there publicly, unfortunately. Uh, over at a different article from ky3.com, another quote from his mother, Tracy, if somebody meets Dave, they don't generally forget him. The 25-year-old, also known as Dave or Big D, is the oldest of three kids. Her son has spent most of his life inside of the gym, garnering some success as an amateur MMA fighter in the local circuit. Quote, he's not just a big, strong guy, but he's just a huge personality, she said. Now, as to why they didn't report him missing, we have a direct quote from his mother here. We didn't report him missing at the very beginning because... He's 25 years old, and he has done that for short periods of time. When it came up past a few weeks, we definitely knew that something was wrong. People are calling us and calling the police now finally and giving us tips, but nothing that's panned out. Now, of course, when we're looking into these cases, I'm always wondering, what about cell phones? They are such a good tool for tracking people down nowadays, and we have an unfortunate situation in this case. Thankfully, uh, Dateline covered this. So this is from NBCNews.com. Tracy explained that David had lost his phone, so he had recently bought a secondhand one with just Wi-Fi that he used to message his friends and family. He's gone off the grid before, but not like this, she said. And he's 25, so we didn't report him missing for a couple weeks. But it's not like him to not contact anyone for this long. It's been months. Something is wrong. In March, David's family reported him missing to the Branson Police Department, and a joint investigation was launched with the Missouri State Highway Patrol. Master Sergeant Danielle Heil with the Missouri State Highway Patrol said... We've hit dead end after dead end, and it's very frustrating, but we're still conducting interviews and talking with anyone who may have information that could lead us to David. We are not giving up. Sergeant Heil told Dateline investigators that looking at this, they're looking at this disappearance as foul play because of the nature of his Facebook messages on the night that he was last seen. He sounded like he was in distress, Sergeant Heil said, and wrote that he may be in trouble. This is a six foot six, 240 pound man. He doesn't just disappear. And that is, it's, it's the big mystery to this whole thing when you boil this story down. As a matter of fact, the Facebook page that's been put together for the search for him is called Mystery of the Missing Fighter. And this image kind of sums it up for you. This is a picture of Dave or Big D uh, with his mother, Tracy. This is a big, strong guy trained to fight. And for some reason, we don't know where he is. His mother even says in this post, I would do anything to have a moment like this with my son again. Dave, if you see this post, please call me and tell me you're okay. Uh, and the rest of this site is just her putting out as much information as she can. Like, like I said, we don't have a ton of detail, but you can get little snips of information by going through this in terms of what's going on with the investigative efforts. But largely, it's Tracy putting post after post about how her heart is broken right now and she needs some help finding her son. And I'm hopeful that if you have friends in the Branson or even Missouri area in general, that you'll consider please sharing this video with them. And if you happen to be a person watching this right now that has some information about this case, 
please do the right thing. Help Tracy out. There's contact information in the description box below. I've had it on the screen as we've been talking about this case also. Please use that contact information and call that tip in. Uh, the Branson Police Department in particular is saying that if you want to remain anonymous with them, you can. So if there is some type of element where you're worried about your own safety, you can remain anonymous by calling that tip in. The family has also put out a phone number for tips to be called directly into them. I'm going to include that in the description box below as well. So brain scratchers, very strange case. We don't have a ton of detail on it. Um, quite honestly, theorizing on it at this point, I don't know that it's going to be all that helpful. And that's why I really tried to focus today on all the known information that we have about David, uh, where he's last seen, what he looks like, tattoos you might see on his body. I think that's the best that we can do is just try to raise exposure to all that. Someone out there has the missing piece, and I hope they can just find it in their heart to do the right thing and to help this family out because this family deserves answers. In the description box below, you will also find a link to a web sleuths thread about this case. It's not big, but if you want to participate in a conversation there, you can also sign up there to do so. Um, one more thing I want to let you guys know about. You might remember a case that we covered here on the channel called Mostly Harmless. And that was about a hiker. Uh, unfortunately, his body was found. They did some work trying to figure out who he was and it came back to this name. He was sometimes called Denim. Uh, he was signing things and writing down mostly harmless or telling people to refer to him as mostly harmless. There is now a, a fundraiser that's being done to do some DNA testing and figure out who this man is. So if you want to donate to this, I'm going to have a link to it in the description box below. On behalf of my amazing supporters on PayPal and Patreon, we have already made a donation to this to help this along. And as you can see, they're already at $4,000 of their $5,000 goal. So we're very close to getting that testing done for Mostly Harmless. And on top of that, they've got this great feature here also where you can contribute your DNA data. So if you think that uh, it might help not just this case, but others. You can go to dnasolves.com, contribute your DNA data, be part of an open, uh, well, I don't want to say open, but be part of a database that can be used for genealogy in a way to help cases just like this. So I hope you'll consider that as well. Before I end today's video, I want to thank several new patrons, starting with Lena Bansbach or Bansbach. Thank you so much, Lena. Um, Rachel Ann Kearney. Thank you, and also a big thank you to Sharon Ayers, who increased her pledge, and Anastasia, who also increased her pledge. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. If you'd like to support the channel, please visit www.lordandarts.com. You can sign up for PayPal, sign up for Patreon, or buy merch. All of it helps keep me here doing what I love doing, trying to help these families, and doing it with limited commercials. You'll notice I never have commercials in the middle of these presentations, just at the start, sometimes at the end, and sometimes I can't even do that because YouTube wants to demonetize videos that talk about some of these sensitive topics, but we gotta talk about them anyway. So I hope that you'll consider supporting the channel over at www.lordandarts.com. Take care everyone, stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you back here on Friday with a brand new episode of Brain Scratch on the Lord and Arts channel.